dudes today we are decorating a mirror this like ornate mirror that i got from spotlight and before we get into the details of that oh look you can see yourself <laughs> oh my god you're a machine ah. before we get into the details of that i just wanted to have like a little mini connection session between me and you because honestly you guys i've been really nervous about making this third video I always knew when I was making the plans for my YouTube channel that the first two videos were going to be a table and a skateboard because those are two things that I make professionally, I get commissioned for them all the time, that's what I do, I'm not worried about putting putting them out there and putting my uh, process out there for people to see because I'm like, I'm a professional, you know, which is a very professional attitude to have. Um, but now we're here, we're here to like the point of why I made a YouTube channel because I've been making art professionally for a couple of years now and I find it difficult to make new things because I don't give myself the time to make for the sake of making, I make for money. I'm never experimenting with things, I'm never, you know, just discovering new stuff because I'm worried about wasting money or whatever. So this third video is the first time I'm making something just to make it. Like this mirror is up in my shop in the link in my description but if no one buys it it's gonna sit in my bedroom. Like it's just gonna go on the wall in my bedroom. Like I made this for me to make a video for fun just to be an artist and I'm just so nervous about it. I'm nervous about you know not making something that's 100% professional or not making something that's hella shiny and I've been watching back my first two videos where I made the table and the skateboard and I'm looking at me in in the first, you know, this little bit, this little intro bit. This intro part of the video is the last thing that I film, by the way, per video, because obviously I'm holding the thing that I've made and I do all of that and I edit everything and then I sit down and I put my face on. Uh, and I think maybe because of that, I'm a bit exhausted in my intro, which is like not the vibe that I want for the video. I just want to be like, hey guys, I made this thing, watch me make this thing. And I'm just watching myself in those first two videos thinking that I'm a bit like robotic. So I'm going to work on that and this is the YouTuber journey, right? Um, <laughs> but thank you for listening to that, to that rant. I don't know if that affected you or you cared about it at all, but let's make this mirror. The first thing we're going to do is cover it in spray paint and you guys can watch me uh, ruin my favorite table with it. I just covered it in gold spray paint. I don't even think about it. <laughs> That's my vibe today. Cover everything in spray paint. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments uh, what you want to see from me. And hopefully you'll like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. So the first thing we're going to do is protect the glass of this mirror with something. Don't do what I did. Don't use cardboard. I just could not find my painter's tape and the only tape I did have I knew was going to leave like residue on the glass. So I was like, let's just grab some cardboard. I was wrong. There's paint all over the cardboard. You can see it for like a single second, which I then did have to come around and like scrape off. It was a huge pain in my ass. Anyway, did a single coat of the gold spray paint over this and then once it dried I'm straight in with this glass marker from Pebio. Now this is not something you want to put down and then remove later. This is something that you want to go over the top of and cover up. Which when you're working with glass can be a little bit annoying because you can cover it up and then because it's glass you can see the reflection of the blue underneath what you've painted on top of it and you'll see that in a second. So just be aware that like when you draw something with this and you're going to cover it you might have to cover it with a thicker line than the line that you've drawn. Hopefully that makes sense. And for anyone wondering, I did draw that border all the way around the edge of the mirror because I couldn't get all that spray paint off. That was not in my original design. So right now I've got my Pebio outliner, as they call it, and essentially what's in here is like, think of it as just like really, really, really thick paint. So if you draw like I've started here, straight from this like tiny little tip, um, straight onto the glass the it kind of has height like it's thick and the reason I'm doing that is so I can draw all my shapes wait for it to dry and then I can paint it with glass paint but instead of being really precise I can kind of just like pour a little bit of paint into these shapes and it'll do it for me and it'll cover up like the blue behind it 
And I really wasn't sure until about five minutes ago whether I was gonna use this one, the gold, which will dry shiny, or if I was gonna use black and do just like a real traditional stained glass kind of look, but I chose gold because the rest of the mirror is gold. I will show you guys how this works close up because I don't think you'll see it uh, in the big camera. So I've just got it with like the head on it. And this is why I do the, the blue first. So I don't have to worry about thinking about drawing something. I could just follow the lines but you can see it comes out really thick and I can just follow the line along and it takes a sec to dry so if you stuff it up you can just come back and do it but you can see that it has height to it so now I can wait for all of this to dry uh, and I can get my glass paint or regular paint, whatever I want, and I can essentially just like pour it into that and it'll act as like a little cup. So instead of being super precise, I can just go boop, 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 and just make it all whatever color I want. So I first started messing around with these uh, Pebio liners because I found this incredible artist. Um, her name is Leah Dia, and I have linked her in my description. So please go have a look. Uh, the work that she does with these Pebio liners is like actually out of this world and she has incredibly steady hands and like a hundred million hours of practice under her belt so I am hoping I will eventually get there because a few of these lines on this mirror are pretty thick and gloopy but that's why I stayed pretty simple with the shapes I was like sure this looks like a flower because I do feel like you have to master the really simple stuff before you get intricate. I've decided I'm gonna do the outer line and then some details in these inner parts in black and it's definitely not because I am about to run out of gold and I'm not confident that I can <laughs> paint all these lines with gold but we'll do the black and we'll just see how the colors look together. Okay my camera died and I have no idea how much of this you saw me do but I've gone over the blue lines with the black and then I've done these like extra little lines on the inside. I've also gone back around and anywhere where there was like blue pen on the outside, like where the actual mirror bit is, I've like tried to cover with gold. Because I realized this morning as I was trying to clean it off that it was just a huge pain in the ass. So I <laughs> covered it in gold instead. But this is where we are. Um, I will wait probably until tomorrow, um, at least until this afternoon, um, to paint all of these pieces. And pretty sure I'm gonna go with purple because I have some gems um, that I want to stick on these like random bits um, and they're all like purple so I might keep the just might keep the whole vibe purple purple and gold you know so I'm using two different kinds of glass paint today the first is this Pebio stuff this this stuff is amazing it's really thick and honestly it's really dark and in this little set that I got uh, there is like a thinner um, which maybe you're supposed to use to thin it out but instead I just also have this second cheaper set of glass paint that you'll see in a sec that had like a white in it so I'm attempting to create a color scheme here but I've really just grabbed the the blue the green and the purple and then added a little bit of white to it so I've got these six colors which is enough for me to create a color palette and not really stress about the placement of each color on the mirror. This is where I kind of gave up on my purple and gold color scheme because I just realized I wasn't going to be able to make that many purples and also green is one of my favorite colors and I was looking at the transparent green in that little cheaper set and I was like I gotta do it. I gotta find a reason to use more green on this mirror so you'll see in a sec that I end up putting green between the flowers and the border just to cover up any blank mirror. And then I also end up putting green in the border.
Now I was pretty heavy handed with this gloss paint, not gonna lie. It was uh, the first time I was using the Pebeo stuff and I just didn't realize how thick it was. So after it dried, I came back with that uh, gold liner and just covered up any of the messes that I'd made. And here is my magical little collection of jewels and gems from Evol Cosmetics. Uh, they are left over from my makeup artist days. I have bags and bags and bags of them. And once I had done this border and all the colors of the flowers, I really just went to town, placing every color without rhyme or reason. And that's okay because it's literally just gonna hang on a wall in my house. Here's a little close up of all the details. And I hope you guys enjoyed just watching me make something this week, like something that wasn't crazy professional or a commission. It was just for me. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I will see you in a fortnight and stay tuned to watch my card painting video. Thanks guys. Bye. Welcome back to a new card painting video. All the materials used in today's video are right here. I did get a bit creative today, you guys, to make up for the fact that I just refused to stop using Poscas and refused to start using actual paint. So we've got some flakes and we've got some alcohol ink and stuff in there today. So spin that wheel. We are landing on number 54. And if you would like to choose a card for the next video, then feel free to leave a number between one and 72 in the comments. Number 54 is a metallic purple. Every time I pull one of these off the wall and have to voice over it, I feel like a bingo lady. Just thought I'd let you guys know. And the design for this card comes from A, an idea from my good friend Alex because he studies bugs. And right now, I can't remember what the word for that is. And honestly, I just think it's kind of funnier to leave this audio in instead of Googling the study of bugs and using the right word. I know it starts with E. I'm so sorry, Alex. <laughs> anyway, he told me to do a bug and this is such a metallic card and I was reminded of a graphic designer that I studied last year because I studied graphic design and I had to do a report on an American graphic designer called Stefan Sagmeister and he did this series of bugs in the ground like mosaic bugs that were painted and made out of little mosaic pieces in a bike path in Bentonville feel free to google that they're very cool so I thought I would sort of take quite a bit of inspiration from that and paint a little Julie bug I'm really trying to up my game here using some Mod Podge and I'm just laying this down on top of the Posca paint I've just popped down. And once it was like a little bit tacky, I applied some amethyst flakes on top. And you can't buy these flakes anymore because the company shut down, but I'm sure there is a place on the internet that has purple flakes. Maybe I'll see if I can find some and put the link in my description. This was a very messy thing to do and I'm a very messy person. So I ended up covering like most of the card in like really annoying tiny pieces of purple flake, but Am I surprised by my own mess? Absolutely not. I did have to wait for the Mod Podge to completely dry or maybe like 50% dry because I'm pretty impatient before I came in with this white gel pen and just kind of highlighted everything. I do use this in the next card as well and um, you'll see me use this and a white Posca a lot just to bring everything out, make things a bit more 3D and also just cover up any of my mistakes with a bunch of white paint because I paint like I learned how to use my hands yesterday. Then I just kind of thickened up the legs a little bit because it just wasn't thick enough for me. I need double C's on my bugs. And don't try to ask me what kind of bug this is. I don't know, man. It's a beetle maybe? Does he look beetly? I don't know. Someone in the comments tell me. Someone name him. And the second card for today was picked by the incredible Rebecca. She picked number 25 smack bang in the middle and we have this like pastely minty green situation and i'm going to use this card to set off my star sign set of cards i decided maybe sometime last week that 12 of these cards out of 72 are going to be star signs and we are starting with pisces uh honestly because it's the 26th of february when i filmed this and it's currently pisces season so what I'm doing here as like a first step is using what's called isopropyl alcohol or isocol because I want to incorporate the tails of these fish in like a really watercolory kind of splashy pattern, if that makes sense. So if you pop down the isocol first, 
that that part of the card will be wet and you'll be able to get this really like organic shape and then you can pop the alcohol ink over the top and the colors will mix together in this really organic way and I am using both ends of a kebab stick to get that sort of like I don't know if it's a koi fish or like a beta fish but get that sort of like stringy effect on the tail and I'm doing it again on the other side with the same two colors of alcohol ink but I'm doing them in the opposite order so the fish look like a little bit different and you will have noticed that I painted the shapes of the fish's bodies just with some acrylic paint uh, before starting a because it takes a second to dry and b because uh, watercolor paints aren't really going to show up on the background as like clearly or as nicely as I want them to so I just come in with the acrylic paint first wait for it to dry and then I have this really uh, saturated background sort of like a white it's actually a really light purple but like a white um, so that I can come in with these blues and they'll um, be really clear this technique that I'm using to watercolor I come in with like a pure color lots and lots and lots of color and a little bit of water first to do that dark outline then I come in with a little bit more water on my brush to spread it out and then even more water on the brush with no color to really blend it into the body of the fish and I waited for that to completely dry which took a hot second not gonna lie and now I'm coming in with my little gel pen to give them little wings that's not the right word wings fins whatever they are I think this means that I have committed to painting another star sign in another two videos which I think will be Taurus by the time we get there and I really don't just want to like paint a bull that's not my vibe I'm really not good at just like full-on painting a mammal that's that's not what I want to do plus I've like dated a couple of Tauruses and that was not the vibe anyway here's some fish look at him this is a close-up of my little Pisces fishies and I actually really loved doing this technique with the alcohol ink so I might do it again in the future anyway thank you guys so much for watching my video and listening to me waffle on here is my wall it is slowly filling up I hope your life is chill and uh I guess I'll see you in two weeks bye Lost inside my mind, I